Today I want to welcome you back to my kitchen and I want to share a recipe that I found online which I think is the easiest flatbread or wrap or tortilla recipe that I've ever made and my family loves it. I'm going to share that with you today. This is a delicious flatbed recipe that you can whip up in basically no time at all and it is very versatile. Like I said, you can use it in wraps or in Tex-Mex food, Mexican food for your enchiladas or quesadillas or your burritos. You can use it for dipping, you can use it as a shawarma or just as a compliment to your favorite meal. I call this quick and easy flatbreads. I have to say that winter finally arrived. It's quite chilly today and according to the weather forecast we will basically reach our freeze point for the first time this winter and you might think that I'm a bit crazy because I'm excited about it but the way I see it is you know the quicker it arrives the quicker it will pass and I can get into growing season. It is difficult for me at this time of year during our winter time to create content outside specifically gardening content because basically nothing is growing. So yeah I'm quite excited for the chilliest part of winter to arrive for the frost to come and do its thing so that you know spring can <laughs> so the spring can actually arrive so I can start working on the outside. In the meantime yes I will you know when the time is ready start seedlings indoors so that I can have an early start in the spring as well. But yes, I'm excited. I think instead of concentrating on the doom and gloom and barrenness of winter, embrace the season, love it, enjoy it, welcome it, so that it will come and pass as well. In the meantime, I will probably create a bit more content on recipes, easy recipes, from scratch recipes. I'm actually quite excited to share a bit more of truly traditional Buddha South African recipes with you guys. My daughter wants me to do a traditional milk tart with her, or milk tart in English, which is probably the most popular traditional South African dessert or pastry. I don't know how to actually explain it but we really want to share that with you and she wants to do that video with me but for now for today i'm doing an easy flatbread recipe with you guys because tonight we actually want to have a bit of a tex-mex evening now tex-mex is basically an american spin on mexican food if you want to put it that way texas mexico tex-mex america mexican food American Mexican food or the way that it is actually perceived from a South African viewpoint. That's where I'm going to use this flatbread as tortillas to make those dishes. So the ingredients that we will need is 350 grams of flour. You can probably use bread flour but I will use cake flour or all-purpose flour and basically 350 grams of that. Well, I'll use 700 grams because I'm going to double the recipe, but I'll have the singular recipe in the description. So 350 grams, a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of vegetable oil, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Sorry, that was a rolling pin and 200 milliliters of boiling hot water. Other equipment that I'm going to use is just my rolling pin, a spoon, a mixing bowl. I use this one with a lid that seals, so I don't need to bother with cling wrap and stuff like that. And obviously my kitchen scale. Okay, so in your mixing bowl, Put it on the scale. Mm -hmm. 
and let's zero that. So in your mixing bowl, there it goes again. Weigh out 350 grams of flour. I'm going to do 700 because I'm doubling the recipe. Seven hundred grams, and I'm going to put about two teaspoons of salt. Mm, okay, two tablespoons of vegetable oil. This is an unleavened flatbread, so I don't have any yeast or baking powder or baking soda or anything in it. And because it's an unleavened bread recipe, we also use it when we partake of the Lord's table or communion for our Pascha meal or Passover meal. And obviously for the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread festival that follows the Passover. And like I said, you can also use it for shawamas and stuff like that. This is almost always in our house. It's say I make it at least once every two weeks. So it's very common in my house. So it's going to mix this up. I just want to zero this again. Put it to water. I'm going to zero it again. And then we measure in 400 milliliters of boiling water. Oh yeah, just remember it, I'm doubling my recipe, so I'm adding four tablespoons of oil and then single recipe is 200 ml of water, I'm going to add 400 ml of water. Just make sure it's zeroed and it's set on water. And now we roughly mix this together. I th think I should just move the camera angle. Okay, and when it's roughly mixed together, we are going to start kneading it with clean hands. It's still a little hot, just be careful. Okay, and as soon as it is well incorporated, we are going to knead this for about two to three minutes. Okay, so we knead this dough for about two to three minutes until the dough is nice and soft and rather elastic. I can see I am slowly approaching that point. And I try and knead in the bowl the whole times, that way I don't have to much of a mess on my table. That it's getting, I think it's almost perfect at this point. To me, this feels perfect. And what we do now. Place it back into the bowl, cover it, you can use cling wrap to cover it, I've got a lid for this bowl and now we leave it for 15 minutes. 
so I left it in here for a little bit more than 20 minutes because I had to pick Lucian up from school. Hello. And uh, Lucian is going to quickly man the camera there so I don't have to stand up and run around and you know zoom in and out. Okay, so after 20 or well after 15 minutes we can remove our dough again. So here's our dough ball. I'm just going to quickly knead it again a little bit. So for the single recipe then, we will then divide the dough into 12 equal pieces. Because I'm making a double recipe, I'm going to divide it into 24 equal pieces. Now a lot of people are excellent in just cutting it and separating it like that. What I am going to do is to weigh mine. So I've got my trusty scale back. Put it on weight. So what we are going to do now is just weigh our dough. 1152. 1.152 kilogram. Okay, so according to my calculations, each piece needs to weigh about 48 grams, normally about 50. So I'm just, just going to take a piece and measure it. This may be a bit excessive, but this is me. There we go. And then we just take each one and basically fold them over into a, a little dough ball and I'll just quickly shape them on the counter here and then I'll put it back into the bowl and just pull the pieces over Take it into a nice bowl. Okay. Okay, see what they do? So I have it all mashed up. Then I take all the edges and pull it over to the middle. And that way we get rid of all those different seams. See, you stretch it a bit like that. See, now there's no seams on that side. And then we roll it. Yeah, you keep your hand like a little bucky, like a little bowl over it, and roll it. And we go around. There we go. How does it look? Perfect. Well, a little bit more. See that opening there? You want that close. I think they must be almost nothing. Yeah. And every single piece must be um, uh, 48 grams. 48. How does it look? Perfect. Hey, it's a
Perfect. Okay, so what we do now, we just close it up and let it stand for another five minutes. Okay, so what we do next is to warm up our skillet on medium heat. So then we take just a bit of flour and we flour just a little bit of workspace on the counter or on the table. Start with one dough ball. One at a time. One at a time, yes. Yes, like one time, one step at a time. <laughs> like one step at a time, okay. Yeah. Okay, take the rolling pin and we flatten it out. In a circular. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but we try to get it as round as possible as thin as you possibly can ah. but you make it more or less the size of your skillet if you can solution yes will you quickly boil the kettle for that there yes. and bring me a cup of boiling water and the little brush yeah, that's something I forgot to mention. And from here, we put it on the skillet at medium heat. You don't want your skillet to be too hot. So have it there for about 40 seconds and flip it. You want to flip it every 40 seconds, but you don't want to go over two minutes cooking. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. You flip it every 30 to 40 seconds. And while we are baking that one, we start rolling the next one. So I'm going to be going to man this batch more. Starts looking good. Okay, Lucian, flip it. Very hot. You can't do it without the dot supervision. Now Lucian is going to take it from the skillet and put it in his plate over there. Okay, and take the hot water with a brush and just brush it. Especially on the edges. Yes. But like it mustn't be like wet, wet, wet. Not like, just uh, like a little sprinkle. Both sides, man. Yes. Turn it around. Not too much water, just a little bit. Take a, another plastic cover or a plastic bag and just cover it, and it will ab absorb because the moisture. It's because you don't want it to like dry, dry out, yeah.
There are club ants in the comments for me. <laughs> so there we go. 24 nice, fresh, fluffy, well, maybe not fluffy, but nice and fresh wraps that won't tear. You can use them with your favorite dip or spread, or you can use them as a wrap, tortilla. There we go. One of the easiest recipes that you ever could make in your kitchen. And I don't want to have one. Do you want one? Yes, please. Thank you. Let's show the camera. You want to tear it? Yes, it, it dries when it tears. So thank you very much for joining us in the kitchen today. I hope you enjoyed this content and that it was informative to you. I really do hope that you try this recipe and see if your family likes it. We love you and we appreciate you. God bless you. Until the next one, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> I say. It's actually boy, okay.